Hi, and welcome to Chess Base Workshop. I'm Steve Lopez. Thanks for clicking on the link and coming along for the ride today on our cool little journey into the world of opening keys in Chess Base. This is probably going to be about a three workshop deal before we're done, by the way. We had one last week that showed you how to start an empty opening key and put your first key position into it. You'll remember this position from last week. This is the defining position of the Roy Lopez exchange variation. And we have already created a upper level, a top level key that has this position in it. In fact, we'll go show it to you now. Let me go back to our opening key. And if I right click and I select show position, there it is. There's our, uh, there's our position. It's upside down because a key position always shows side to move as the uh, bottom of the diagram. So it's Black's turn here. Anyway, there it is. There's our classification position. Um, let me bail out of that and we'll go back to our game screen. This is the uh, defining position of the Roy Lopez exchange. At this point, you know, it, it, as we said last week, by the way, as soon as the, the bishop cops off the knight, as we see here, that's the Roy exchange. At this point, black has two options. That's one of the reasons why I pick the Roy exchange for purposes of this. There, there are break points that are pretty clear cut and well defined, and this is one of them. Now, there's only two ways black can go here unless he's an idiot. Okay? You can take with the B pawn, you can take with the D pawn. That's it. I mean, it's all you got. You know, there's no other things you can do here. Um, this particular game is B takes C6. I'm going to go ahead and kick that out. I'm going to go to the other game, which is D takes C6. Let me go back to my opening key, then we'll go back to the game. Again, here's our defining position of the Roy Lopez exchange. Notice that if I was to create a key at this point, this is the position that would be used for the key. Not the end position of this game, which is after white has castled. No, no. It is whatever position is currently highlighted. That is what is going to be used as the position when you create a key. Remember that from last week. Now, we want to create a sub key. Okay? Because if we were to take let's say a database of 5,000 Roy Lopez exchange variation games and we were to classify them into this key at this point we'd wind up with 5,000 games over here instead of a zero because I haven't classified anything yet we'd end up with 5,000 games over here uh, that's not a very useful key <laughs> that's not a key that's a game list so what what we want instead is we want to create some sub keys in other words some additional little file folders that games will get classified into so we can find just the games that we want of particular variations. So here's how we do it. Let's go back to our game. In this particular game, black does it the right way. You can take with the B pawn, and some people get away with that, but that's not really the way you're supposed to play it. You're supposed to play it this way. So that's why I want to put this in there, okay? D takes C6. That's going to be our new key position, okay? So what we're going to do now is with this position on this board, we're going to go back to our key. We're going to highlight our upper level key. We're going to right click. We're going to go to edit. And we're going to select insert new sub key. What we want is we want this key to be nested inside of the key that says Roy Lopez Exchange Variation. If I was to click Insert New Key, they'd kind of be side by side, and it would de defeat the whole purpose. This thing is a hierarchical key. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute when I click Insert New Sub Key. That's what we're going to do. First of all, let me back up, highlight it, right click, Edit, Insert New Sub Key. There's our board position. Hey, it's white's turn to move. So white's at the bottom of this particular uh, this particular diagram. We'll click OK. And here's our old friend that allows us to define how that key will appear in our list of keys. Now understand, all the moves up to this point are shown. I already know all these moves. Bishop takes C6, as I said last week, that's the defining position of the Roy Lopez exchange variation. So the best thing to do with this is to edit it, and we talked last week about how to edit. we got a flashing cursor here. First of all, we're going to get rid of everything before move 4. We're going to move that across, and I'm going to hit the very carefully hit the delete key on my keyboard, my little tiny chiclet size delete key. Then we're going to go over here. We're going to remove that. And we're going to do our ellipsis 
Actually, I think now see I don't know whether you need a period in ellipsis or whether the ellipsis will do here. Um, great, I'm just going to do an ellipsis. The heck with it. So there we are. Move four. Blacks move four. D takes C six. Is it going to be our defining position here? We click OK. And look what happens. It looks like nothing happened. Oops. It's not true. Look over here. This works just like Windows Explorer and bunches of other stuff you see in, in computer software these days. Look, we have a little plus sign next to Roy Lopez Exchange Variation. And if we click that little plus sign, bing! little sub key opens up right there. We can say D takes C6 is right here, okay, which is cool. That's what we want. So that's good. Now we have another sub key that we wish to put in, which is B takes C6. So we go back, and I've already done the work, so we're going to close this window. We're going to go over to Games, click B takes C6. I'll click right on the move to jump right to it. We'll go back to our opening key. Again, go back to your game list, click on the Openings tab is where you'll find this. Once again, it's not going to be a subkey of D takes C6. It's going to be on the same level as D takes C6. So what we do here then is click once on this to highlight it on Roy Lopez Exchange Variation. We're going to right click, go to Edit, Insert New Subkey. Just like we did before, there is our defining position. Notice that the B pawn has taken on C6. That's what we want. White's turn to move. That's why white's at the bottom of the display. We click OK. And this time around, we will get rid of all the moves prior to move four. We will replace bishop takes c6 with a couple of dots. Click OK. And there we are. b takes c6, d takes c6. Right there. As sub keys of the Roy Lopez exchange. And if we click the little minus sign next to Roy Lopez exchange, it will zip it back up. And we have our top level key again. Or we can click the plus and expand it and there we are. Now, I noticed something here and that's this. When you organize your opening keys, remember last week we talked about organization. There's an art to creating an opening key, to doing it well. And I can't go through all the ins and outs. And I'll tell you why, it's because I still struggle with this sometimes. I'm currently writing a chess book, uh, an e-book, an electronic book, and it requires an opening key. And it has to be a specialized opening key. I just can't crib from somebody else. This particular book needs a particular key, and I have to construct it. And I have been battling opening keys now for about a month. Every time I add a new variation, I have to add a new opening key. And that means I have to figure out where it goes into the hierarchy of openings. And it's a real grind. The work, I mean, as far as clicking on stuff in the software, as I said last week, the, the, the software is fine. The software is easy. It can't be any easier than this. The grind is in the organizational stuff. It's in the stuff you have to do in your head to make this thing come out properly. And just to prove it to you, in this opening key that we're looking at right now, I've already made a mistake. Do you know what it is? Here's the deal. When you organize an opening key, lesser played variations usually come first. Because that way, when you create an opening key... For example, if I put in tons and tons and tons of subkeys under D takes C6, which is where all the action is in the Roy Lopez Exchange, is D takes C6. What will happen is B takes C6 will be way down in the bottom of a long scrolling list of opening variations and positions, and it's going to wind up getting overlooked. So what you tend to do is you tend to take your lesser played openings, your sidelines, if you will, and you make them appear first. Well, B takes C6 does not appear first. It appears second. Oops, we can fix that. I'll show you how to do that. This is where it starts getting a little bit complicated. But I'll show you this because I've been doing a ton of this over the last month. First of all, you highlight the key that you want to move. What we're doing is we're just moving keys up and down in the hierarchy. That's all it is. So let me highlight B takes C6. That's the one I want to move. I'll right click and I will come down here to define key memo. What this is very similar to, I'll tell you straight up, it's like cut and paste. If you're using a word processor or tons of other programs, you know, graphics programs, whatever, it's like cut and paste. Um, control C, Control V in a word processor, you take a block of text, hit Control C for copy, uh, where you're going to copy something, then you're going to paste it somewhere else. That's it. 
define key memo, all that is, it's like copy in a word processor or in a graphics editor. Okay, so you're going to click on that. You're going to right, or I'm sorry, you're going to left click on it. You go down, let me start over. Go to B take C6, then scroll down here to define key memo. That's the same thing as copy in a word processor. Okay, so we're going to copy. It don't look like nothing happened. You don't get, you know, fireworks going off. You don't get, you know, flashing lights and beating drums and something tells you you did it. You just know that you did it when the dialogue disappears. To paste it, you highlight a key. And when you paste this key, when you're moving it, when you're cutting it out of here and pasting it in somewhere else, it's going to appear directly above whatever key you have highlighted which is where I want it. I want B6 to be ahead of D takes C6. Essentially, I'm swapping their positions. So I highlight a key that I want this key to appear above. I right-click, insert key memo. Basically, that's your paste command. Click on that. Oh, look, and they've swapped positions. And if I was, like, really goofy and easily entertained, I could do this all day long. I could take D takes C6 define key memo, go here, insert key memo, and it's back the way it was when it was wrong. So like I say, this is just great. If you're easily entertained, I guess you could do this all day long. Um, personally, I think you're better off with solitaire. But right click, define key memo. Go to the one you want it to appear above, because it will insert it above the highlighted key. Right click again, insert key memo, and we have swapped their positions. I hope that was clear enough. I know I've been messing around with this a little bit, but that's why I did it for a reason. So I can show it to you multiple times just to, to drill it into your head of how to move a key up and down in a hierarchy. Now, next time around in Chess Base Workshop, we're going to show you how to add sub sub keys. Now, you may be thinking, well, you just showed me how to do a sub key. Is there more to this? Well, yeah and no. Uh, no, because you basically got the basics down here. But yeah, because there's a couple tricks you need to know that have nothing to do with the key window, but have to do with the board window. Confused? Good. That means you'll come back next, next time around and you'll check out the next chess base workshop. It's called uh, having a captive audience. Thank you. I'm very good at that. Um, until next time, though, um, please have fun.